YouTube, I'm Chris, taking a break from all the various different kinds of uh, music videos and reel-to-reel -reel tapes I've been doing. Uh, I want to do another how-to video, haven't done one for quite a long while. And this is my 2011, it's a Sportster, it's the uh, Nightster, so 2011 Harley Davidson Nightster Sportster. Bought this used, uh, bought it right about on, right about on or about October 1st of 2019. So I did get some riding time in and the last previous owner he took really really good care of it. Uh, it's been to the Harley dealership uh, when he traded it in and the shop went through it all. They did some minor repairs and adjustments and checked everything all out. So when I bought it, um, I don't remember the, the price I paid for it right off the top of my mind, but uh, it was all taken care of and all good to go with all new brakes. Uh, I put in a new air filter, it's the K&N rechargeable air filter. This is the supercharger that the previous owner put on it. It's vacuum operated. It really doesn't really serve any useful purpose because the actual hole, it doesn't really come through that supercharger port, it comes through the bottom. So it's just there for decoration. But no big deal, I'll keep it on there. It's, you know, it's kind of cool looking. And anyway, so this has the Vance and Hines pipes. Those are put on by the previous owner. Those are the dream pipes. I wanted those on my previous Harley. I had an 06 Harley Davidson Sportster, the 1200 low, and I had the Screaming Eagle pipes on that with the aftermarket baffles, which made it plenty loud. And I've always wanted the Vance and Hines pipes, but never could afford them. And uh, so these are already been put on, and these are already as loud as my last previous Harley uh, was, so I'm pretty happy with that. There's no alarm system on it, but the brakes do check out. It's got a good battery in it. The oil's been changed. It's all been lubed and adjusted with new rear back tire. So when I bought it home, I went on ahead and I put on that chrome, that chrome cover on it. I had that on my last Harley, so I put that on there. I'm going to leave the primary cover, the primary derby cover alone. I'm not going to need to uh, replace that. And this is the uh, tachometer. I put that tachometer on there uh, on my own one evening. I did not make a video of it. I would have liked to have, but uh, it took me quite a good long while to, uh, to uh, install that tachometer on the, uh, on the bike. So I spent a good half the night out here in the garage and it was chilly out and so it just took too long I didn't really have the time and I wasn't sure how long a video would be so that's the original miles 11,290 miles at the moment and that's the time which I've always wanted that on my last Harley so that's kind of cool and so I got uh, let's see if I can get on over here to my uh, I was wanting to get over here to my um, I might be able to turn the key on, I guess. I was wanting to get over to my, uh, I was wanting to get to my trip odometer. So it's all fuel injected. Uh, it's got the fuel pump in the tank. Let's see if I can get over here to me. There it is, finally. So I put on, uh, so far I've, ri I've ridden it 64 miles, 64 and a half miles. And since I filled it up with gas, I've tr I've traveled 2.2 miles. So I reset the trip odometer B every time I get I get gas, and that kind of gives me an, an idea, kind of sort of how much gas I got left. But on the other hand, you do have a low fuel gauge indicator comes on the dash, and uh, and I so I get the time set, and it's the speedometer is LED. This tachometer, as you can kind of sort of see, does not light up. I don't know why it came that way, brand new. Uh, it was not out of the box or out of the package or whichever. It was just I installed it and got it powered up. There's no light, so that might be another something or else I might do sometime later. I might tear back into the gauge and replace the bulb with an LED one. I don't really feel like taking it off the the handlebar right now. I got it on there really good and snug and tight. And the part of the challenge for this tachometer was to install this little module so it worked and functioned properly. And I had to get the wiring diagram from a Harley so I could figure out where all those different wires I'll plug into correctly. And you're gonna have a hard time trying to see, 
but uh, I had to do was I had to run these wires you can't really still see very well but unless I you kind of sort of see where I got all these wires all jammed and tucked all in I got those little blue wire connectors on all the wires for the coil so it does have the power ground and tachometer signals all tapped in all those wires straight for the coil. I, I tried to keep it all in one place that I could and I did the best I could to make sure they all had good connections and I have tested it uh, and uh, I was having issues there for a little while with the connectors making good contact so I went all through it all again. There's really next to no room to dig that thing out so I, it took me quite a good while uh, working all on a good couple hours to dig all the wires all back uh, making sure those little squeeze connectors are making real good connection and contact so uh, so I got it all plugged in it's it's working and the tachometer needle does bounce and jump around when the engine is cold which is normal but after it gets good and warmed up and hot then I won't be jumping around anymore it stays out pretty level and then what I, the other thing I did is I replaced all of the LED bulbs or I mean I replaced all of the I replaced all of the incandescent bulbs with LED and so none of those were real cheap but I got them installed including the headlight that's all LED and then the same thing for the rear which as you can see that one ain't working so that's going to be something I need to probably figure out but that one's working and uh, so what I was looking to do or at least I was hoping to do was I have a fast I have a fast flashing condition with these LED bulbs so I got a little a little uh, module and so was, and, uh, I'll make a video of it here at the same time installing the module so the LED bulbs will flash the right speed so as it turn on the right turn signal it flashes really quick so a little module I bought is supposed to uh, Cure that now that one is flashing so I've, always, I've had quite a time with that socket I mean I, I tried putting in an LED bulb into it and it broke in half and so I had to get another LED bulb and put it back in there so now it's lighting up so I don't know I think it's the socket there might be something with that socket it's got a bad connection or something so it's it's one of those um, frustrating things but anyway I do have it plugged all in it's sitting for the winter and I do have it plugged all in to the little uh, battery tender it's gonna be plugged in that way for the rest of the winter and I do have the stable I got the stable fuel treatment inside the gas tank already so what I was wanting to do on this video was a couple things it's gonna so it might be kind of a long video uh, first thing I was wanting to do is I was wanting to change out this belt guard. It's it's all black with the holes all in it, and I kind of was hoping to get a little bit better mixture of a chrome and black together. So, I you know first I was going to just leave it alone, but I thought well it would kind of give it a nice balanced out look, a more black and chrome together. So I thought maybe I'll just change out that one top belt guard, leave the lower one alone, and uh, have a bit of a nice uh, you know nice little balance of it so what I need to do is I take my wrench and socket I got I got that loosened up already not all the way but I got it loosened up enough I was wanting to make sure I was going to be able to loosen it before I started recording anything and then I got that one kind of loosened up so it shouldn't be too tough or bad I don't believe to um, to take that out and replace it so that's now what I'm going to do is finish loosening up this nut for the shock and see if I can uh, at least get that off of there. And I had to scrounge around for a while for the right size wrench too. So I have to see if I still got the using the right size wrench or not. Let's see. I had my, had my tools kind of lined out. I thought.
right, so I got that nut off, and so it is, this is just a matter of just kind of twisting and pulling that off. So now I'm going to go ahead and do, loosen up the uh, front one. So I got that removed, and now we just uh, take the whole take the whole piece off. Here's a new one. It's the uh, got the chrome belt guard, JMP cycles. It says 2004-2005, uh, but it's it's it said on the website it will fit this uh, bike. like that and we'll just put the uh, nut and bolt back all together I don't know what the torque is but I'm sure if it's just snug or good good and snug it's going to be all you need
Oh, that's as snug as I can get that one, so snug down the, uh, this other, this front half. As snug as I can get that one. I'll see if I can get a, I a blue paper towel rag. I can wipe that off. So that looks quite a bit better now. It all looks got a, looks got a nice balanced out chrome look. I know I was supposed to remove the backrest to have any easier access to that nut, but I was trying to I was hoping I could not have to take too many things all off all at once to try to save some time. But anyway, so now I'll take a I'll uh, set the camera up just a bit better and I can start working on the, the turn signal uh, module that I got. Okay, now I'm going to work on the turn signal module that flashes really quick. So what I've got to do is take the seat off and the seat comes off with just that screw. Take the screw out and the whole seat will sort of push forward and should lift off. So now with the uh, seat removed, here we got the uh, wire connector. We, first of all, I got this wire. This is this turn signal brake light wire. goes to the, through this fender to that side. And then you have another couple wires here that go through that fender for the other turn signal and license plate. And so it's easy to think, since it goes up through that way, that maybe the module is way further on up where you can't get to it. But it turns out the connector you're looking for for this little module is going to be this. As you can see, get the orange, brown, blue, red, violet, black. And if I get the little module, here you got the orange, violet, blue, red. I can't see the colors very well, but you know what I mean. So it looks like the uh, little plug in in between that connector there. So this is going to be a real easy plug and play. And then after we get it plugged in, then we need to go through and get it initialized so it works properly with a computer.
I'll get it all buttoned down in a little bit. But right now, I just want to see if this thing's going to work. Find that little plug and play device is that they do give you directions on how to set it up. So, like we do, we just already got it plugged into those two connectors. And then it's already set for the little for the normal position switch. They give you a thing here on the other side to look for it. So you can have it for normal or you can have it for uh, fast or high load. So I'll have it for normal for now just to see what happens. Then we'll turn the key on. We've got to do a sig signal synchronization. We'll have it in the run position. And the nice thing was I'll have the engine off because if I start the engine in here in the garage being a cold day, It'll really gas up the garage uh, real, real bad and set off the alarm. Uh, but anyway, we'll turn the right turn signal on for right at two times. Then we'll, um, at the second, after the second flash, turn it off. And then we'll do the other one uh, for two times after the second one. Turn, we'll go back to the right turn signal and allow it to flash for at least ten times. We'll turn the key off, give it a few seconds or so. Uh, turn it back on. We'll see if they're going to be running properly or not with it blinking. See if it's going to still hyper flash or not. And if they do, we'll set the little tiny switch for the high position. And uh, I do not have an alarm, factory installed alarm with the Harley. Um, it, it, it was just for an option and it was not put on the bike. So we'll see. So we'll see about uh, doing the signal synchronization. I'll get the camera set up for it. Well, that seemed to have taken care of it. It was right about long by now. It would have started to flash really quick, fast. And um, so it's, it's, it's much better. Now I only have that little switch on the normal setting, not the high load. So that's pretty good. And then we've got the front ones. We've got the front, uh, the front. And i got the right turn signal. Oh. And then i got the... Um, you got the left turn signal, that's working properly. So that works all out pretty good. So now just a matter of getting some zip ties, a little bit of a wire ties or whatever, and kind of get that snugged in and I'll put the seat back on.
All right, well, anyway, I got the seat on there. It's flashing correctly, it's still not hyper flashing. So, now what I gotta do is I'll install the cell phone mount on the handlebars, and we'll do that next. Now, before I get to the cell phone mount on the handlebars, I thought maybe I'll go on ahead, take out a couple of screws that were holding the tachometer onto the mount and pulled the uh, tachometer off. I took the little bulb out and I checked for voltage with my voltmeter. I don't have any voltage at all in there. The bulb looks to be good and uh, so I'm not sure why I don't have voltage. I know I went through all of that wiring at least two or three different good ways and so I don't know, it might be, uh, might be something inside there that's not making voltage but I only mostly ride the Harley during the daytime hours anyway. I don't ride it at all at night or in the dark. So that's okay. Um, I'll just put it all back together. It's held by these, uh, held on the mount with these uh, two screws, and you get this little set screw here. Holds the gauge in place. So I'll put it all back together, and I'll start working on the uh, handlebar mount. I got the cell phone mount all out of the package. It comes with all of the directions that you're that you'll use with all of the hardware. It's not really, I don't think, going to be too complicated or, or difficult. It's just a matter of trying to find a good location for it. On uh, this Harley, my 2011 Sportster, I had to use a little reducer thing here so it snug against the handlebars a bit better and that fits down inside there. So just a matter of uh, trying to put that in there. And then I'll have the uh, I'll have the screws and little nuts to attach to it to the handlebars. I'm not sure how exactly I want it because it goes that way or that way. So I don't know, maybe maybe that way will, will be better. So I get it all attached here in a little bit. So what I've done so far is I do have this the clamp on this uh, it's black it's a little hard to see but I got it attached to the handlebar with those uh, little filler ring things to help it secure against the handlebar fairly snug and then this uh, this part this part here is the mounting and so that goes right through the hole there and I just I don't have an acorn nut that's supposed to send me one it's supposed to have one in the package and they didn't have what, so I had to go through my stash and get a little nut there that will work. And I'm just going to just have it all just snug, finger tight, in case I need to move them some things around. And then later, I can go back around to uh, make some adjustments and tighten things down some more. So now I need to do is put the little actual uh, mounting device here, and then that secures down with, with the nuts and bolts through the holes. So it goes right through those, those holes, so I'll probably have to turn that little mounting plate around. And so once I kind of get it all on, then I can tighten snug everything down. Alright, so now I have the this little, uh, da this little uh, mounting plate screwed on to this actual phone holder. And I got the little stick-on uh, little rubber pieces on the front there. So it does have two screws that goes in the top and bottom slots and then this will snap right onto that mounting ball. And so then what I'll, all I gotta do then it'd be to uh, kind of make me make some adjustments. It kind of snaps right on that ball there. I have to work on it a little bit. But that snaps on and then all I gotta do is just make some adjustments tighten that up and then I'll tighten up this nut here and then I just have to uh, go ahead and secure down the top and bottom screws of the handlebar clamps which you can't really see right now because everything wants to be difficult but you kind of see the screw here you gotta tighten that up and also the other on the one on the other side so I'm gonna get those all snug down then uh, I'm hoping sometime later I can have my phone on there and I can perhaps 
uh, stream while I'm uh, roaring on down the road or something all like that. So that's it's dark out, lost all kinds of light, don't have much light here in the uh, garage. So good news is that uh, this mounting thing is about done. It's about finished. Looking forward to making some videos and all of my lights are working well, at least some of them are. I'm not sure, I'm not understanding very well as to uh, how or why it is that one is working and the other is not. So it just continues to be, I guess, the story of my life, but I'll have to get it figured out. I don't know. I mean, once I press a button, then it starts working. So I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the battery. Uh, or just something not energizing quite all the way. But anyway, so my lights do work. Sometimes I just, 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 you know, have to toggle the brake light to get the one on the back to come on, and then I guess hit a directional blinker for that one to come on. But anyway, no, that's just, you know, LEDs for you. Okay, anyway, well, thank you very much for watching my video. Hope this will help some of you with some of your projects which you might be working on on your bike. So we'll see you on the next one.